Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour. My name is Jason Rockman. Uh, we've taken a couple of weeks off to uh, recharge the old batteries and uh, to go on vacation. <laughs> but we were back in full force, and we were so excited about today's guest because this guy is an absolute legend in the metal world. He is um, not only the singer of one of the most notorious bands in the world, but, um, but he's also a really, really, really rad guy. And uh, we're very fortunate to have Blothar the Berserker with us from Guar. Um, I think it's crazy that we got to talk to Blothar in full regalia. I mean, this guy is, he's, he's the singer of Guar and he's not showing up as his alter ego, his human. He's showing up as Blothar the Berserker. And um, I'm so excited for everybody to see this. But before I go too far, uh, I would like to welcome my co-host, Ryan Stick. What is going on, Ryan? I haven't seen you in forever. You're I like how you used the term, we went on vacation. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, I, you, okay. So, you went uh, and saw some of the wonders of the world, and I yeah. sat here and ate my feelings. There's yeah. a little bit of diff a difference between your term of vacation and mine. Yeah, I feel so, like I feel like the guy in the van when you're James Bond, and you're like, I'm going to go shack up with a pretty blonde and explore Europe, Yeah, and I'm just going to be here and you know wait for photos. That's pretty much what you did, yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, I got to I got to go to Italy. It's been um, it's been a uh, a dream of my wife uh, Julia, who's also our, our producer, uh, mm. for years. So we got to go to um, to uh, on a pretty extensive trip of Italy for two weeks, and um, it's great. It was fun. I had the best time. Um, but of course, you come back to reality, right? Where you're like, oh, that was amazing, and then you look at your credit card bill, and you're like, oh, how are we gonna? Oh fuck. <laughs> So um, <laughs> on that note, let's uh, thank our sponsor of the Rockman Power Hour, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Um, just want to let you know, uh, if you've never tried Heartbeat Hot Sauce, they're one of the best hot sauces in the world, and I mean that truly. Um, I am showing you a full bottle right now. If you're listening to the podcast uh, on an audio source um, and you're not seeing this, this is the pineapple habanero that I'm holding right now that is an absolute uh, incredible hot sauce. They're a great, great company out of Thunder Bay, Ontario that we love here that are our title sponsors. Um, I know this is a nice full bottle that I'm showing you here, Ryan, on camera, but mm -hmm. uh, the reality in my fridge is that there's about 12 bottles that all uh, are a quarter full and are all gunky on the top because we use it all the time. So, uh, and I also want to let you know that if you order through Heartbeat Hot Sauce and you use our promo code ROCKMAN20, which I'm going to point to down there, it's going to be around there, right there, yep. ROCKMAN20 will get you 20% off your entire order of hot sauce, so go check it out. HeartbeatHotSauce.com, we're always happy to have them on board with us. And um, the guys that keep us looking fresh as fuck are... Uh, buddies at studio house designs ryan is rocking a reservoir dogs long sleeve which is a great great um i love that shirt and uh i am rocking the vhs stack of um stephen king movies so that's a let i love their vhs stack shirts yeah and they've been yeah. like you know just waiting for them to do another one or reprints or something but that's why it's important to follow uh, Studio House's uh, Instagram because they're always posting new things. And whenever something cool is coming up or a drop, they let you know in advance. And you, it makes you feel part of the experience. Yeah, I, sure. just, I actually got the uh, the notice that my A24 bundle was shipping. So I was very Me excited too. about that. So <laughs> there you go. So we'll be seeing some of that in the next couple of weeks. But um, let's 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 talk about Guar. I mean, I know that you're a big, big Guar fan. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like Guar a lot. Uh I think Guar are one of the best live bands that you'll ever see. And um, the fact that we got Blothar here to chat is just, to me, it's one of the biggest feathers in our cap so far on this podcast. To have him here with us is 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 mind-blowing. And the new album is called The New Dark Ages, and it is available everywhere uh, on Metal Blade Records. You definitely need to check out the new Guar album. It is, um, it's great. And you and I, we, I mean, we, we got a chance to listen to this record in advance. The thing about Guar is you got all the stuff that's great to see the visuals, the, the, you know, the, the, the folklore of seeing them live, the idea of wearing, you know, it's the only metal show you go to where everybody's wearing a white t-shirt because they want to come out blood drenched, <laughs> but the songs are there. Oh yeah. Th they're good. I've heard a lot of Guar knockoff bands that kind of just took, um, all the flash and none of the substance Yeah, where they're like, Oh, we're wearing funny costumes. We don't have to try at all, right? And it's like, no, Gore legitimately has some memorable, amazing songs. And the, the new album, I would say, is like a legit great rock and roll metal album that happens to be a Gore album. You yeah. know, like when you listen to the lyrics, you're like, oh, that's totally, 
totally guar. It's just like, no, that's a straight up tight, amazing punk metal band. Yeah, no, they're, 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 they never disappoint. And, um, and what I love about them is, you know, if you look at their website and, uh, you know, the stuff that they offer fans, like, you know, uh, not only do they have a ton of bundles for the new album, they've got a graphic novel. Um, these guys are, are the kings of merch. They know how to really, really keep their their fans engaged. You know, as I'm looking through, they've got shirts, comics, toys, hoodies, CBD, beer. <laughs> these guys know how to do it. They know how to keep people engaged. So um, I'm excited. Let's let let's bring them in right now. And uh, this is fun because you and I got to do this one together, um, ladies and gentlemen. None other than Blothar the Berserker from Guar joining us right here on the Rockman Power Hour. Oh my God! There he is. <laughs> yes, it is the Berserker Blothar. Blothar, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us today on the Rockman Power Hour. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, I'm surprised you actually want to talk to um, to to measly humans like us. Well, me too. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Sorry for being late. I was taking a dump. <laughs> a dump well taken, sir. A dump, dump well taken. taken. Yeah. Uh, we, we really appreciate you being with us today. Um, I know that the, uh, the new album is coming out uh, called The New Dark Ages. And right. um, but there's a lot going on with Guar. But, but first of all, what has Guar been doing in their downtime? Because I know there's been a bit of downtime for the entire world now. That's right. Yes. Well, uh, you know, I mean, of course, we were staying away from each other because, as you can imagine, we're not very good company. Let's just say it <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, we were doing what everybody was doing. We we're, you know, collecting toilet paper and jerking off with hand sanitizer. <laughs> that's got a that's got a smart if you've got a little cut on you know what. Oh yeah, you don't want it in the pee hole. So um, you, I know that this band has been um, this band has been together for a long, long time. You guys have been uh, pretty much spreading the the, the Guar gospel for years now. Um, but it's always an event when Guar puts out a new album. There's there's no doubt about that. Uh, how how have the rehearsals been for this? Because I imagine there's a tour coming as well, right? Yeah, there is. Um, I mean, we have we're we're actually getting ready to start rehearsal uh, tomorrow for the for the spring tour, which is, uh, you know, that, that's more of a, I think we're doing a wrestling show, uh, which means we're going to set up a wrestling ring and uh, we're going to wrestle uh, the prime minister of China and, uh, and uh, Vladimir Putin in a tag team match. Um, well, the <laughs> Gore has some weird tag team, tag team <laughs> partners, right? Like uh, a homeless bag lady who's pregnant. It's a tag team. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i mean so so we, we 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 manage but let's just say that uh the rehearsals they're going to be fine i mean it, it, we, you know we, we get together and we go over we go over what the hell we're going to do uh and and we haven't really started rehearsing for the big tour which is uh uh once the record comes out you know that's right. that's that's when we're going to have a lot of new stuff a lot of stuff on stage uh from the album and from the the graphic novel that goes with it yeah. Uh, so that'll be fun. Yeah. There's, and that's the, the, what I love about Guar, uh, and I'm sure Ryan will agree with me. There's always stuff for the fans, you know, um, as, as, as much as you guys hate us, um, you show that you do kind of love us too. <laughs> of course. Yes. There, we will, there's no end to our willingness to prostitute ourselves. <laughs> Is it, uh, has the time honored tradition of the audience leaving literally covered in blood? Is that, is that going to continue? That's going to continue. You know, I, I was just telling somebody that, you know, if you had to, if we were to ask fans to fill out a comment card at the end of the show, go ahead and, and tell us what you think and then put it in the suggestion box. Probably the only thing they would say, it's always more blood. That's what they want. More blood, right. more blood. And they always think that it's not as much as it was last time, even though we add at least 50 gallons to every show. At this point, we've got like, <laughs> what four 100 gallon tanks that we drag around i don't know that we that we spit all of that out but uh uh you know we're, we're definitely up there <laughs> so th th this has got I, and you know and, and anyone who hasn't seen guar before i mean you know you got to go see guar wearing a white t-shirt that's you know that's probably the only time you're ever going to go to a metal show 
where you see metalheads wearing white t-shirts. It's, it's yes. a very, it's actually a really, really cool thing to see. Cause I think all of us, like Ryan and I, all we wear are black t-shirts, but there's always gotta be that one white shirt that you're ready to have completely destroyed at a gore show. That's um, right. My skin, my skin took it pretty badly last time I saw them, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're pretty white. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, but, I, yeah. But, so Boy, I, I, I can't imagine, I, I know, right? <laughs> I can't imagine being your booking agent. So it must be, um, you know, when you, when you're talking about technical riders, you know, obviously a hospitality rider for Guar must be pretty interesting. Cause I imagine it must involve human sacrifice, yeah, uh, yeah. various rodents, yeah, um, babies, right. Pangolins in terms of a technical rider. Um, you have to make sure that the venue is ready for this. Have you guys ever gotten into a situation where you've left the stage and the venue has been like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, you know, one of the greatest things about Guar is, is uh, playing someplace where we've never been and the people don't know what to expect uh, because they are so shocked. Uh, and I remember playing in Wales. We played at this church. It was a <laughs> and uh, they had turned it into a venue and, and it had this gorgeous, you know, like, I mean, you know that it's a centuries old blonde wood floor. Yeah. <laughs> and and we just hosed that thing down. And at the end of the night, the guy was just in tears. And he had a, you know, he had a, a mop, like, please, are you gonna do this? You know, uh so that that was that was very traumatic. So now whenever when anyone ever goes to pay tribute to their God at that place of worship, they they'll see the, <laughs> the blood stained white floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh the new album's amazing. Well, thank I you. love it. Yeah, it really, really is. And, and something about it that has the classic or consistency is that I met my wife about 11 years ago and fucking an animal was playing in other songs and she left the room in disgust. <laughs> and listening to the new album today, I was playing it and she immediately came in the kitchen and said, oh, my God, would you please turn that down? And I'm like, war is back, baby. <laughs> yeah. I love your vocals. I love the sound. I love the sound of your vocals. Is there any pesky, shitty human singers that may have inspired you? Well, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know that he's human exactly, but Ronnie James Dio uh, mm. is really more of an elf. I think he was even in a band called Elf. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I like, I, I love, I love Dio. I, I love, uh, I love, you know, Paul Diano, the, the old singer from Iron Maiden. Yeah. Um, uh, I love. I think you know one of the most influential singers in heavy metal is not in heavy metal at all, and that's Jazz Coleman um from killing joke uh yeah you know the, the, if i had to pick one one singer that really seems especially at this moment i mean you know gojira that might as well be him singing it might as well be him singing on uh on the uh mastodon record i mean it's it, it really sounds a lot like 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 jazz coleman yeah um, and i and i love him and you can hear that i mean even in the the first single that we did the the uh, motherfucking liar has a uh, a little bit of that influence in there. There's a lot of uh, a lot of human singers that that I that I have have made an impact on me. Of course, Ozzy, yeah, just in his general state of confusion and I don't know I, I, <laughs> how that guy manages to be such a good singer. I don't know, but but he's, he's I I think he might be from the planet next to yours. I mean, the, the guy is not human. He's not human. Yeah. There's no Ozzy's not a human being. Ozzy is Ozzy is from another. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they asked me in, in my last interview, they asked me, you know, if there were any any people that I knew who were aliens hiding in plain sight. And my answer was Bjork. But, uh, <laughs> but of course, of course, Ozzy would probably be on that list. Um, you, you know, it's funny how you bring up Killing Joke. Um, Killing Joke were one of these bands. And if we can just talk purely music here for a second. Uh, Killing Joke were always one of these bands that kind of morphed. You know, they could fit in with the hardcore kids. They could fit in with the alternative kids. They really were kind of a band you couldn't define. Do you know what I mean? They oh, didn't yeah. have, they, you couldn't just put them in there. So it's funny you bring up Killing Joke as an influence because they were influential on so many bands, but I don't think they get the, the, the respect that they deserve. They don't. And, and they also are a band, um, you know, it's funny, like when we went on, we were on tour with Voivod, 
Oh and, yeah, uh, from, our, from our hometown. Uh, we, yeah. we absolutely love Wood Bud. <laughs> yeah, please and, don't kill them. Yeah, don't well, kill them, please. We don't. No, we're not going to kill them. Do not. We can't go, kill them. They're, don't they're kill from outer space too. Don't kill. A, <laughs> don't kill away. He's one of the only drummers that can actually still play without a click, and uh, he's you yeah. know, and that can play without being edited on a full track. Right. Like, and who doesn't use toms that are the size of like a, a Barbie drum kit? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, it, no. I mean, <laughs> my point was that we sat on the bus and smoked a lot of weed and uh, and listened to uh, new records by old bands. That's <laughs> Right, right. And and the, how, it, how, how was that? It was great, man. It was fucking great. And, you know, but that's the thing is that, you know, Killing Joke is still putting out good records. Yeah, and, I, I couldn't uh, agree more. Yeah. And, and, and there are other bands too. I mean, The Damned still putting out good records. I mean, uh, maybe not as uh, in your face as Killing Joke. I mean, Killing Joke, they just never stopped. They never no. stopped putting no. out great records. And uh, I don't know that they've ever put out a bad one. And Voivod themselves, I mean, you know, they're, they're not, you know, people keep asking, and I guess it's a fair question, like, why are you still making records, right? Uh, you know, why don't you become a, 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 I mean, people have asked us that. And the answer is because we still have something to say, just like these yeah. bands, and because we're still watching you kids fuck it all up and do it wrong. So <laughs> you gotta step in. Yeah, I it's funny you say that because uh you know again killing joke uh legends I got to see them open up they were on tour with Tool and um and they were just they were they were brilliant and Voivod too you know I saw Voivod last year uh we talked to uh we talked to Michelle on the show uh, a couple months back you know th th they just put out a phenomenal record you know yeah. that, that that holds up with anything else in their catalog so oh, yeah. that's what I think makes Ryan and I so happy about Guar is that this new record um, the new dark ages really stands up. Uh, and, and I love the fact that if someone just heard the music and didn't know what Guar was about, they would just be like, that's a good metal song. But then, <laughs> and it's, and there's a lot of bands now, I don't know how you feel about ghost, but ghost are one of these bands that, um, you know, they have songs that could make it at radio, but they have a whole other dimension, you know, a whole, whole other aspect to the band that if, when people latch onto, they're like, holy shit, it's just more to like about this band. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or more to dislike as the case. <laughs> yeah. But you uh, guys hate it. You guys hate everything. I mean, we hate that's... everything. No, I mean, I mean, ghost is ghost is you're right. There is this whole other dimension to it. It's weird though. Uh, I do like that. You can really tell their sense of humor now that, that, yes. that, that's, yeah. that that's coming out a little bit more because that done with po faced seriousness would be utterly contemptible. Um, but but it's not and, and i like that aspect of it it is pop music though man i mean it's mm. it's freaking britney spears pop it's it's as, as pop as it gets it it's sensible songwriting that that appeals to the masses and it's yep. and it's but it's satanic yeah. <laughs> well I, I gotta say about your new album i mean like some of these choruses are great like i hear future guar anthems and that's really and that's really great because you know for a while there some older bands were putting out records you know they're going through the motions but now, I mean, uh, you know, there's this new rejuvenation of interest in music, I find. And yeah, uh, I, I, I frankly, this is my favorite Guar album in oh, years. Wow. Like, I really I really do like it a lot. And I love Thank you. I, lo I love your singing. I love how tight the band is. Um, did you uh, you know, where do you prefer to practice? You prefer to practice on your home world or Earth? Is Earth filled with a bunch of like, you know, shady distractions and <laughs> annoying people? Well, it's funny because, uh, the, you know, one guy said to us, uh, well, you can really hear you guys are having a good time on this record. And I was like, well, maybe it's just opposite world. Like we were having a bad time on the record. And that's what you can hear is that uh, uh, because the, the power went out while we were recording it. it, there was a snowstorm and, and we already had the studio booked. We were already in there and we had literally it was on the, while we were driving to the studio to start recording uh, that the power went out and it stayed out for almost two weeks. So all of the tracking, uh, all of the basic tracks are done on gasoline powered generators um, in a studio. Yeah. In a studio with no power. Wow. Uh, right. And, and, you know, I mean, that's actually why we probably would have kept at least some of the guitar tracks, but you know, you could hear the generator cycling through the, the tubes. <laughs> um, so that was a problem. <laughs> but uh, the answer to where, whether we like to practice 
here or there is that we don't like to practice at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a, uh, uh, Blothar, we have a question from one of our loyal listeners um, that, uh, that that wanted, no, we, we, we told him that we were going to be talking to you. So we had a, a, a really good question that we wanted to ask you right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is from Marco from Botoxic Foxes. If you had a choice, would you kill all your enemies individually, i.e. disemboweling them one by one, fitting their head in a vice, or would you dump them all into an acid bath and watch them slowly decompose in an orgy of flesh? <laughs> What a wonderful question. Why choose? <laughs> why choose? You know, why, why not do it all? I mean, I, I think, I think uh, certainly, I mean, that was one of the worst things about the pandemic was watching humans die from just disease rather than pulling them apart ourselves. So uh, I think, you know, Guar, Guar we, we're very hands-on. So uh, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have to go with the hands-on approach. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, there's a, there's a documentary. Um, can you tell me a bit about the documentary and how people can see it or, and, and when it's going to be released? Well, the, it's going to have some, it's coming out in July. There's going to be somewhat of a theatrical release for it. Uh, and there is a, a streaming release that we actually can't announce yet, but that okay. is a, uh, it's really, really cool for us. It's really big. It's a really, uh, good situation because the documentary, uh, I think people are going to really like it. I think people are going to, uh, certainly everybody that, that has seen it so far uh, has reacted well to it. And it's the story of the human thralls of Guar, which is in, in a way, in a, way a, a more interesting story. Uh, you know, my personal human thrall uh, is an academic, right? Someone who's, who's studied and, and, and taught at the, uh, uh, university and uh, is trained to look for things that are like one thing that's like something else. Right. Right. Uh, and, and there isn't anything like the organization that puts Guar on stage. Um, just like there isn't really anything like Guar out there that, that, that does the kind of performances we do, but every bit as unique is this organization that makes the band. And so, uh, I mean, I can't find anything like it. So that is, the story that uh, the filmmaker wanted to tell. And I think he does a really good job with it. I got to definitely say, uh, you know, just as a, a fan of Gore for many, many years, I can always tell that Gore, you know, comes from a very, as, as in your face and as crass as it can be, it comes from a real place of intelligence. And everyone, everyone in the band from your home world is definitely uh, approaching it, and a lot of people who have kind of ripped off Guar don't understand the intellect, be, the intellect behind it. And I think that's why you've had such a, a long career on this planet full of crappy humans, because, uh, you know, someday we'll evolve and we'll be on your wavelength. I hope so. I hope so, too. I think uh, I think, you know, I mean, we've 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 tried. Um, we've uh, we've definitely, you know, we, we've we've worked at it over the years. And I think that. Uh, there is a lot of effort that goes into the band. Um, I'm glad that that there are people who recognize that uh, there is some intellect behind what we do. And 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 Guar certainly, even from the beginning, even back in the days of Hello, we've always mounted uh, a pretty serious critique of modernity. <laughs> and uh, and I'm glad that you know that people pick it up. I mean, it, uh, unfortunately, it's like uh, Mike Gitter once told me from the magazine Cream. He uh, way back in the day, uh, he said, you know, Guar has quietly been making great albums for many, many years now. And I was like, well, Mike, I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment, but <laughs> thanks, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to Guar, just like there's a lot to Ghost. I mean, you have to. Well, that's it, and that's exactly what I was saying. You know, I think sometimes if Guar is taken at face value, there's some people that just will not even take a minute to listen. But when you listen, with when I if I was to listen to Guar, and I was just to give it to a kid who'd never seen Guar and just go listen to this, they would hear the music differently. But then it, when they get the other side to it, they would either latch on or they wouldn't. And I think it's the people that get the multi layers of guar are the ones that are, are the better for it. Yeah, me too. And I, and I actually, to be honest with you, I mean, that's how, uh, that's how our management team has been kind of a, 
kind of working our record, right? It's like uh, take it someplace and, and play them something and don't show them the band. Yeah. And ask them, you know, don't tell them who it is. And then they're like, hey, I like that. You know, uh, this rat catcher song's pretty good. We'll put it on the radio. Uh, and then they're like, well, it's Guar. Well, really? We don't. <laughs> and it was also funny that. Uh, the radio promo guy told me that in every case, the people's answer when they mentioned the band was we don't play guar. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, and then uh, so they figured out this way of doing it, which is actually very smart. So so I imagine this management team you're going to let live. <laughs> this management team is allowed to live. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Ratcatcher. That's a great song and a real uh, a real special type song. It's got a real 70s like hard rock vibe to it. Yeah, I noticed that throughout the entire album. You're like, you know, you can't really define this album of, oh, it all sounds like this. From each track, it seems like you're delving into different decades of what what was great about metal and kind of bringing it to the forefront. Yeah, was that intentional? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. And and we're trying, you know, to uh, also to make a record, even in its production, that that needed to be made as far as uh, as far as sound went. You know, like uh, it's a uh, it's very raw in the guitars, um, and then when it's not raw, it's, it's beyond processed, right? It's like uh, almost guitar synthesizer. I mean, and there's a lot of stuff on it that metal bands typically don't do. Uh, but definitely uh, we wanted to, to, you know, uh, to really bring out some of the, the influences that Guar has had that people might not have recognized, you know? Um, and I, I think that, it's funny you mentioned, I mean, Ratcatcher, yeah, absolutely, is supposed to have a sort of Alice Cooper, um, almost queen feel in the, in the, in the choruses, you know, um, because Guar's it really influenced by glam rock, the yeah. British version, right? You know, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, you know, that, that's what we've, we've always, we've, we've always been that. Uh, it's always funny to talk to people. Uh, and when they ask who is influential to Guar, there, people are oftentimes surprised. Yeah. Um, you know, bands that have ideas, that's who, that's who interests Guar, right? Craftwork, Devo, Trio, uh, The Tubes, um, Parliament, right? Like yeah. bands that, that knew how to put something on stage. Uh, that's what we were interested in. Um, and, uh, and then as far as metal goes, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> really metal probably the only bad thing about heavy metal is that it takes itself seriously right like, yeah but but when it doesn't it's 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 wonderful and even when it does you know i mean i love black sabbath i love uh listening to those records you know i love the scorpions um yeah you can't tell me some of that's not tongue-in-cheek of course, you know, <laughs> of course. It's, it's so it's just so good and even even when it is done tongue in cheek, like a band like Steel Panther, um, right? It, it, I think bands like that need to exist for people to to, you know, to learn that some of the time, you know, so back in the day when some of the bands were doing some of the things that Steel Panther make fun of, they still were kind of taking the piss out of each other by doing. Yeah, that. absolutely. Um, we thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, the new album is called the new dark ages. And, uh, I, I think both of us aren't worthy and, and thank you for letting us live for this last, you know, 32 minutes. I, yes. I hope, I hope you don't obliterate us before we get off. <laughs> thank you. And I'm sorry I was late there. It, 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 you're always allowed to be late. Is there anything yeah. that you'd like to add before we, we let you go? You're on Guar time, which is always late. Hey man, check out the record. Check out Guar Live. It's, uh, I don't think you you will not regret it, humans. Except for that you'll be dead, which of course you will regret. Uh, but we'll be we'll be there. You're in Montreal, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be there. Looking forward to it. All right. Have a good one. Yeah, that was really cool, and I really like the fact that he was even referring to you know the human side of him. Yeah. And we we you know we get. We got a little, uh, we got deep there for a Guar interview. Like I yeah. thought it was just going to be nothing but like jokes the entire time. Yeah. He, but I'm he, glad that he opened we, up. We, yeah. We pulled some uh, serious musicianship stuff because you could tell that this guy's a musician first mm -hmm. and, and and a great performer. So um, my my memory, my first memory of Guar, like was from Empire Records. 
yeah. where Mark Mark is eating some special brownies and he's uh, and Gore is his favorite band and he's watching it on TV and then he's fantasizing that he's on set with, with Gore. Gore. Yeah, yeah, like, I hey, that. Well, hey, Mark, why don't you join the band? Wow, you're a great guitarist. It's too bad you have to die. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, I totally, rem- I totally remember that. That was such a good. I, I mean, the thing with Gore is that they, they've been around for so long that mm. they're kind of a staple in pop culture too. You know what I mean? The fact that they yeah. come up in movies like that, the fact that um, it's almost a rite of passage for you to go to your first Guar show if you're a metalhead. So it's it's just it's just cool to 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 think that they're still they've still endured. You know, they lost uh, Odorungus, um, Dave, who was a great great guy. Um, mm. I got a chance to spend a bit of time with him before he passed, uh, probably about a decade ago. And um, yeah, it's it's it, it's nice to see that they're still soldiering on, um, and they have been for forever. And you know, they're they're out on the road right now doing a bunch of dates in the U S and, and I'm hoping that we get a Montreal date. They never pass up Montreal. They always play here. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really, really fun to have Blothar on man. And I hope we can have him on again. It was a, it was a true thrill to have Blothar the, the berserker with us. First Gore tour I ever saw. And my buddy, Mark of by the way, uh, runs mind blender media with me. Yeah. And you'll always see that name at the end of all those, uh, Kings of quarantine videos. Um, he was waving the flag of Gore forever. Like he's yeah. the one that uh, even his girlfriend that he has been with for 13 years, like within the first year to, they're together, she went to seek war and her hair is blonde. And because of the massive amount Oof. of fake blood, it actually she had pink hair for a few weeks. But the first war tour I ever saw was after uh, Dave unfortunately passed on. Yeah. And uh, I saw the tribute tour in a way, you know, the send off mm-hmm. tour. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing war again. Where, uh, you know, Blowflower is more of, okay, this is not a goodbye show as much as this is a, you know, this is the new chapter of Gore, you know? Right. So check out the new album. It's called The New Dark Ages. It's available everywhere. And uh, we want to thank Blothar for being on. Of course, we also want to thank our title sponsor, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Um, if you want to get some Heartbeat Hot Sauce that you've, and you've never tried it before, if you just want to re-up and you happen to be listening to this podcast and you're like, hey... I'd love to save a bit of money on that. Well, we're going to help you do that right now because if you look right here, Rockman20 is your code and that will get you 20% off your entire order of hot sauce. So go check them out, heartbeathotsauce.com. Our thanks again to uh, Studio House Designs for keeping us looking fresh all the time. And uh, thanks to my co-host, Ryan Stick. Thanks to our producer, Julia Kajerski. And we will see you next week on the Rockman Power Hour. (laughs) 